All right, so we're going to show how to create this uh, bumper uh, looking part in SolidWorks using all the uh, advanced features and easy to use functionality uh, that's available to you um, when you're in SolidWorks. So as you can see, the user interface is very easy, it's very clean, um, it's, it's easy for people to start using it. Um, the buttons are very large and, and uh, easy to understand what they do. And uh, for us to create this sort of a shape, there's actually uh, quite a number of easy to use tools that we can take advantage of. For me, I really just need to sketch out the basic profile shape, um, put in the dimensions that I want, any dimensions that I know I can type in, and the uh, geometry will automatically scale itself uh, based on what I put in. So you can see that in a few uh, clicks, you basically define your shape. If there's any dimensions that are missing, it'll simply turn the lines blue, and then you can go in and add those dimensions for you. Now, once you have the basic shape created, we can simply ask SolidWorks to turn this into 3D with a single click of a button. All we need to do now is specify a distance on how long we want this bumper to be, maybe 60 inches or 72 inches. And then we can simply specify a thickness for the piece of metal. So let's make this quarter inch thick, 0.25 inches. After that, it creates our first shape for us in just a matter of seconds. Once we have that shape, it's very easy to add other pieces of metal or material onto the outside of it. Simply click one of the sides, and then you can begin sketching the new shape. So in this case, you can trace over top of the existing profile, and this creates what we call a parametric link, basically meaning that if the size of the original part changes, the secondary part will also change its size so you always have perfect fit between your two parts. Now again, we can simply select to create a new part, give this one a thickness, maybe again let's use 0.25 inches, quarter of an inch, and it will create the new part on there for us. Now this particular part had a hole in the side of it, I believe. It's very easy to add these sort of features. You simply draw out your hole give it the diameter, and then of course specify the distance from the top, two and a half, and from the side. So as we give it dimensions again, it will figure out where it needs to position itself. And now we can simply go in and tell it that it needs to be a hole that cuts through. Now you notice we're only designing one half of this bumper, because the second half over here we'll actually take care of with a mirror feature. On top of that, there's a couple cutouts here that we want to take care of. We can use handy geometric tools such as slots, which automatically create these sort of callouts. And we can also go and create any other sort of geometry that we want. Again, once we have that, it's very simple to simply cut it and it's going to create those sort of shapes. Now in SolidWorks we have the ability to automatically change the size and location. So if you wanted to move the slot over so it um, doesn't have interference or so that something can pass through it, it's actually as simple as just simply clicking and dragging it. And you can actually move this slot around or change the size of it. So in SolidWorks everything is very easy to do, especially from a concept point of view. So now that we have basically one half of our bumper created, SolidWorks allows us to leverage these functionalities such as mirroring. Mirroring is a powerful command that basically allows us to take one half of the model and mirror it over to the other side, complete with all the features and the holes. Similarly, any sort of features that we have, such as this cutout, we can also mirror over to the other side. So by using these sort of intelligent design techniques in SolidWorks, we really only need to design half of our model, and the entire model actually maintains its relationships. Meaning that if I were to ever go and change the size of this, 
to make it a little bit taller. All the other parts would actually adjust and stretch themselves in real time. Meaning that you can reuse this or reshape this part in the future or to make it fit across any other machine that you might need to use it for. So that's the uh, quick introduction to how to use SOLIDWORKS to create this sort of uh, a bumper very easily and very quickly. And again, this whole uh, demonstration was done uh, you know, in a couple of minutes. Obviously, we're not talking to be done a lot quicker, but uh, I wanted to explain to you some of the tools and methods that I was using so you can uh, start to understand it and uh, hopefully use it for yourself in the future. Thanks.